My name is Delia Grace and I'm a veterinary epidemiologist and uh, I first came to Ulrich in 2002 when I was being interviewed for a, uh, a doctorate in an Ilri project in West Africa. So I came for the interview, I was interviewed by John McDermott and Tom Randolph and I'm happy to say that I was successful and that I was uh, awarded the, um, the position which was to go and study trypanoside resistance in West Africa. So it was just over three years um, on that project, uh, and I was working on trypanoside resistance, but with the emphasis on the farm level, what, was hap what farmers were doing, and how this was contributing to the problem, and what we could do to help farmers make other choices and change their behavior so that they were still able to treat their animals, but they were getting less trypanoside resistance. After that, I then came to Ilri as a joint appointment with um, Cornell University, working on food safety. Hillary had done some work on food safety. Uh, in fact, from a veterinary public health perspective, was the first work Hillary did on food safety, looking at milk, meat, the classical zoonosis. And then they had done some really interesting work, which was around why food safety as a constraint to market access. So as a veterinarian, we tend to think of food safety as a problem which we want to solve. And the people in Ilri were more coming from the perspective of that worrying about food safety was a problem that they wanted to solve because it was blocking smallholder access to markets. So that was kind of interesting and a, a kind of a different way of thinking about a problem. Uh, and I think then when I came, the emphasis was, was more food safety as a constraint. So this was the start of a new problem, a new program looking at food safety as a constraint to human health and development in the broadest sense. So not only blocking people from getting to markets, but also sickening and killing them. And that was, uh, that was an interesting work. So th the last five years then were very interesting because we saw this dedicated group which was looking at, for the first time, at human health and nutrition and the, the intersection with livestock, we saw that group being closed down because it was decided that this was not relevant to the CGIR. And then we saw a new group, like a phoenix coming from the ashes, which was completely focused on human health and nutrition. And this was not just Ilri, but the other centers coming together under the, this, this uh, process of change with the, 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 the CGIR has been going through, that the centers come together to work on fewer, bigger problems and have more impact. So one of these programs is on uh, agriculture for human health and nutrition, which has got about probably about half or over half of the, the program deals in nutrition, and that's being um, mainly led by IFPRI. And then about a quarter of the program deals with diseases, the diseases like food safety and zoonosis and, and other problems which are associated with agriculture, and that's now being led by ILRI. This is a demand-driven program in as much as there is growing consensus that the problems, the health-associated problems of agriculture cannot be solved by human health alone. So, but in the past, the, the approaches to these problems have been very top-down, very monosectoral. And while there is a space has now opened to bring in agricultural research to bear on problems of, of human health, it's not really clear what is the comparative advantage, what we should be doing, what we can do best, which other people can't do, and, and yes, and, and how, what and how we, we need to work. So at the moment there's been a lot of workers around strategizing and planning and thinking and, and finding partnerships and, and seeing where we, in this kind of fairly crowded arena, where CGR centers can be best placed and be most effective. We've already identified some key issues and key problems, which uh, one of them being Rift Valley fever and emerging diseases, another being the whole area of food safety and informal markets, these, these markets where poor people buy and sell most of their food and where safety is not very high, but re regulation and legislation has absolutely failed to have any impact on food safety. So we see that as a key area. But cross-cutting is this whole area of generating evidence 
because at the moment, although we know there are lots and lots of problems out there, we don't know which are the big ones, which are the small ones, which ones are there in, in certain circumstances and not in others, and what can be done about them. So coming up with that kind of evidence and those sorts of new tools, new metrics, which enable us to, to measure and to understand will be a key part of this new program.